uh, I just have a few additional references here. One of them I had used for my last lecture as well, but I forgot to mention it. These are the, uh, there was this seminar jointly by MIT and Northeastern and they have their lecture notes available. So if you just Google Daha EHA seminar, the, the lecture notes are available, which I found helpful. And then there is also this paper by Arun Ram and Go, which got uploaded last week into the archive. Uh, so for uh, double affine braid groups for GLN that we will be discussing in the next lecture, this, this reference will be, uh, will be used. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, so I just have a short paragraph here about what we uh, already had last time with some notation and so on. So R is a irreducible reduced finite root system. RA is the corresponding affine root system. We had uh, fixed a vial chamber and an alcove containing zero, which was sitting inside that vial chamber. So that yielded a set of finite simple roots for R and a set of affine simple roots for delta. And then we had uh, S0 and S, which is the uh, which uh, which uh, S0 is basically the finite simple reflections and S is the affine simple reflections coming from delta and uh, each of them yield uh, Coxter groups with their corresponding Coxter systems uh, uh, as as here and uh, the affine vial group is uh, this is uh, yeah so it is uh, Q check Q check is the core root lattice for the root system R semi-direct product with W where W is the finite vial group. Okay, so uh, today what we'll do is uh, I want to basically get to uh, affine Hecke algebras and discuss two presentations of it, the Coxter and the Bernstein presentation. So I will uh, build up the material necessary to do that and hopefully I'll finish that also as well today. So I want to first uh, define the af extended affine while group. So enlarge, um, enlarge WA by uh, replacing a uh, Q check with the uh, P check, which is the covate lattice on which uh, on which W still acts. Uh, so this gives us uh, the extended affine while group W E, which is W semi-direct product with T of uh, P check. Uh, this is called the the extended affine while group. And uh, what we have is uh, uh, note that uh, W E also acts uh, also acts on the set of affine roots on uh, on the set of uh, affine roots R A. Uh, suppose suppose A is uh, alpha plus N C is an affine root. It uh, it is an R A where uh, alpha is an R and N is an integer, then uh, uh, for, for lambda in P check, um, T of lambda acting on A, uh, if you unravel the action we had last time, this is basically A minus the inner product of alpha lambda times C, recall that C is the constant function one here. And uh, this belongs to uh, Z because alpha is in Q and lambda is in P check. Okay, so what you end up with is again an affine root. So WE also acts on RA. So this gives, uh, so, so WE acts on the set of, uh, uh, set of affine hyperplanes. Uh, um, alcoves, etc. And we may extend, uh, we may uh, extend the uh, the length function on uh, on W A uh, to W E. Uh, uh, recall that uh, uh, that you have this length function. One way of uh, defining it is uh, um, by saying and length of W is the cardinality of uh, Ra plus intersected with W inverse Ra minus, right? You can extend, uh, you can basically use the same definition to extend the length function from Wa to WE. And uh, since, uh, since WE permutes the alcoves, and it's a fact that, uh, and uh, uh, Wa acts simply transitively on the alcoves, Um, 
for for w in uh, w e there exists a unique w s in w a such that uh, w of uh, c a is w s of c a okay where w s is in the affine while group now so this implies that w s inverse w stabilizes uh, uh, C A, the Zalkov C A, and uh, so and uh, it permutes the the walls of C A, and uh, since uh, the length of W S equals the length of W, we see that uh, uh, the length of W S inverse W is actually zero. So this this yields this definition of this group omega. So let uh, let omega be the group uh, uh, which consists of all W and W E such that the length of W is zero, uh, which is also the set of all W and W E such that uh, W of C A equals C A. Okay. So then by the then our discussion gives gives that uh, uh, we is basically wa semi-direct product with omega omega acts on uh, omega stabilizes the alcove ca so it basically acts on the it yeah it permutes the walls of ca and the walls of ca are precisely the give, yield the affine simple reflections so basically omega permutes permutes the set s okay which is the which is part of the coxter system of wa okay so and uh, uh, okay so maybe let me explain what these things look like for type an minus 1 uh, type uh, an minus 1 uh, so we, we have v is the is the hyperplane uh, in rn uh, consisting of points uh, uh, the sum of uh, whose coordinates is zero, um, right? And uh, the roots are basically plus or minus uh, EI minus EJ, uh, I guess one less than or equal to I less than J, yeah, less than or equal to N. And then uh, we may choose the vial chamber so that uh, uh, EI minus EI plus one, uh, one less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus one is a set of simple roots. Okay, and uh, uh, the while group of the while group is isomorphic to S n, the symmetric group. The highest root here is uh, basically e one minus e n. So so a naught. Is based, the the affine simple reflection is one minus of e one minus e n, okay, and uh, yeah. So this alcove C uh, was basically the set of all x and v such that uh, a i of x is uh, is greater than is greater than zero uh, for all i in i naught and. Um, CA is the set of all uh, X in C such that uh, basically this alpha naught of X is less than one. This is alpha naught. Okay. So so if if we draw a picture, this is going to look like, uh, so you have these, uh, uh, say this is uh, HE1 minus E2, HE2 minus E3 say, and HE1 minus E3, then, um, uh, this is a vial chamber, right? This is a, uh, uh, maybe let me change the color of, uh, yeah. So this is a, oh. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so this is a vial chamber. And, and then your alcove, uh, the affine simple roots are go basically gonna involve translates of, uh, the affine roots are going to be translates of these uh, finite roots. So you're going to have uh, these, and then you're going to have these, and uh, yeah, 
uh, sorry, yeah, and then you're gonna have these and so on, right? This is how uh, the the V is gonna get, uh, so these are the simplices. And then your alcove that we have here, this is, uh, this is one minus, yeah, so H1 minus E1 minus E3. And so this alcove CA is, uh, this is our alcove CA, okay? And this is our vial chamber C. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, P check is. Uh, yeah. yeah. So P, uh, P check is basically going to be Q check together with this element E1 minus 1 over N times E1 plus so on plus EN. And where Q check is basically this, yeah, so I guess this you can, yeah, Q check is this set of vectors uh, whose uh, coordinates are integers uh, with some zero. And this group uh, omega that we discussed is uh, isomorphic to P check mod Q check, which is basically Z mod NZ. You can you can see this from here. And uh, in fact, you can show, in fact, um, omega is generated by this element, T E1 times S1 through Sn, where this is the Coxter element of W. It's the product of all simple reflections, uh, Coxter element of W. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so these are the objects that we have discussed so far. And note that I want to uh, sort of mention this, we can, uh, because we'll be talking about GLN. So what about affine uh, while groups uh, for, uh, for, uh, for reductive groups? So if you have a GSA uh, split and uh, say with maximal torus T. Sorry, um, what's SN? Is that SN minus one? In, in the definition, uh, omega downstairs. Yeah, the Coxeter element should be SN minus one up to Sorry, SN minus yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is S E N minus one minus E N, whatever we are the indexing is. Okay, so this then you can look at the group. Let uh, you can look at this group W tilde, which is X lowest star of T semi-direct product with W, where this is the co-character lattice of this torus. So for G L N T is yeah. So when G is G L N, this this T is just the diagonal matrices. And then uh, you can talk about this more general uh, uh, group. And so for, for, yeah, so for GLN, this is just W tilde is uh, X lowest star T, semi-direct product with SN. For uh, SLN, W tilde, if you look at the maximal torus in uh, SLN, um, then because uh, SLN is simply connected, its uh, co-character lattice is its co-root lattice. So this is Q check semi-direct product with SN. And for, for PGLN, uh, you have W tilde is, so this is basically the affine while group that we had. And this is X lowest star T semi-direct product SN, where now T is the maximal torus in PGLN. But PGLN is an adjoint group. So this is its co-character lattice is its co-weight lattice. Uh, so this is uh, this is the F extended affine while group. Okay, so uh, these are uh, in, if you if you look at this definition, then these both both of them are uh, sort of special cases of uh, yeah both the affine and the extended affine while group fit into this uh, sort of more general picture. Okay, um, so that's yeah, uh, so index two or something. Uh, uh, which one? index uh, and what is the index of uh, the W A and for PGLN in SLN, we can think of yeah. So this is Z mode NZ. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, so maybe if uh, if you want to work with GLN, if you want to work out this example for GLN, I guess V would just be so. Uh, let me just say V is R N in that case for GLN. Uh, the the co-character lattice is just uh, uh, R N. Uh, tensor with R, yeah, uh, is R in uh, the roots and you know the finite while group. They are all going to stay the same. 
uh, of course, P check is not relevant anymore because the group we are looking at is X lower star T. And then this group omega for GLN, yeah, so this group omega for GLN uh, is going to be X lower star T mod Q check, uh, which is isomorphic to Z. It is still generated by this element. Except that when you raise it to the power n, this element becomes central and then PGLN won't see it, but GLN will see it. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this, this whatever we have discussed here can be modified to work for GLN as well. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is uh, sort of something I wanted to discuss in the last lecture, but I, I couldn't finish it. Anyway, so now today I want to talk about uh, affine and extended affine braid groups. Uh, So the so the braid group uh, BE is uh, BE of the of 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 say WE is the group uh, is the group with generators TW uh, WN WE and uh, relations. Uh, T of W times T of W prime equals T of W W prime if uh, the length of W plus the length of W prime equals the length of W W prime. Again, we are just ignoring the relation, the quadratic relation Pi square is one here. And similarly, you have, uh, similarly, we have uh, uh, BA for, uh, the affine while group WA, and this is a Coxeter group, uh, uh, right? So, so, so the so the discussion we had last time carries through. In terms, you know, we had these braid relations and so on. So all those discussions carry through. So the discussions from last time uh, carry through. Okay, and uh, and uh, as we noted above, as noted above, um, the uh, extended affine weil group is W A semi-direct product with this group omega, and uh, omega permutes the elements of S, permutes the elements of S. Uh, so, so theorem. The, the elements TU, uh, U in omega form a, form a subgroup of uh, BE isomorphic to omega uh, and uh, base BE is BA uh, semi-direct product with omega. Again, I mean, I'll just quickly say that the action of the uh, the the action of omega on B A is uh, if u in omega is uh, such that u of a i equals a j, then uh, uh, then t u t i t u inverse is t j, and here t i is t s i. Okay, so I'll not prove this theorem. It is, uh, it is. Uh, so maybe let me just uh, say a few things about it. Uh, sketch. Uh, if uh, if u and u prime belong to omega, then the the length of u u prime is zero, which is the length of u plus the length of u prime, right? So uh, so so t u times t u prime is t u u prime. Okay, so uh, I'm basically yeah explaining why this forms a group isomorphic to omega and what the uh, what the relations are, and if uh, if u of a i equals a j, then um, u s uh, sorry u s i u inverse is s j right. This implies that u uh, s i is s j u, which implies that uh, length of u uh, s i equals and oh, sorry, and the length of USI equals 
one, which is the length of SGU. Okay, because U has length zero. Uh, it lies in omega, so it has length zero. Okay, so from this, we get that uh, uh, now using the, the relation in the braid group, the, this relation, we get that uh, TU, TSI is TSJ, TU, which, uh, which basically, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, so uh, yeah, so recall that uh, we had uh, WE was basically W semi-direct product with T of P check. We had this other decomposition and uh, WA was uh, W semi-direct product with T of Q check. So what we want now is we want, uh, we want analogous, uh, decompositions uh, for uh, for for B E and uh, and B A um, and also and also uh, we want these decompositions for the affine Hecke algebras that we will construct out of these break groups uh, Hecke algebras. Okay, so. Uh, so let me maybe so yeah so let me give give a couple of uh, definitions uh, for for yeah so for lambda in p check let uh, let me define this element y lambda in the braid group uh, be this element if uh, if y, uh, y lambda is p t of lambda if uh, lambda belongs to p uh, plus check these are the the, the dominant coweights and uh, uh, y lambda is uh, y mu times y nu inverse if lambda is mu minus nu in p check where mu and nu are in p uh, check plus Okay, so the, the point is uh, the following. So when I, so the reason we define these elements is the following. So theorem, um, uh, so Y lambda is well defined for, for lambda in P check and uh, Y lambda times Y mu is Y lambda plus mu for all uh, lambda mu in P check. And uh, the map, uh, the map, which takes lambda to y lambda, uh, determines uh, a lattice isomorphism between uh, p check and the subgroup uh, y lambda uh, lambda in p check. Of, of B. As I said, we are trying to decompose our B. Uh, we want an analogous decomposition for B. E. So this theorem is identifying a copy of P check inside the, uh, the braid group B. Okay. And uh, uh, let me quickly give a proof of this. Of course, Y lambda is well defined for, uh, uh, for, uh, for lambda in uh, P plus check. And uh, the key point is uh, the, this property of the length function. So if for, for lambda and mu in P plus check, uh, the length of T of lambda plus mu is equal to the length of T of lambda plus the length of T of mu. Uh, so, so Y lambda plus mu is Y lambda times Y mu. For for these dominant coweights, okay. So this will, uh, yeah. So this will easily um, imply the the theorem for uh, for lambda in P check. I mean, I'll just it is sort of just uh, one just has to write it down. So if I if I take lambda in P check and I write lambda as mu minus nu, say mu one minus nu one, and which is also equal to mu two minus nu two, where mu i uh, nu i are in P check plus, then uh, it, uh, it just yeah. So and for mu i and uh, uh, 
yeah so for you you just have to let me label this as one use one to see that lambda is well defined why lambda is well defined okay so because you'll have mu one plus mu two is mu two plus mu one and so on and then you can use this one and then get that y lambda is well defined and uh, yeah so that that is uh, that is basically it and uh, the the natural surjection from uh, b e to w e uh, uh, restricted to uh, to y lambda lambda n p check gives the required inverse. Okay, so so now we have uh, we have identified a copy of uh, p check inside our braid group. The the next thing we have to do is uh, so yeah so next. Uh, we have to uh, we we have to describe the commutation relations uh, between uh, the y lambda and the and the and the ti uh, where i is from one through n uh, yeah i is in basically i naught the finite simple reflections the ti that correspond to the finite simple reflections that's what we want to do and uh, so, so so to do that um, so to do that uh, note that uh, sorry i moved the subscript to a Yeah, so to do this, note that uh, y lambda, lambda in p check is, uh, is generated by, uh, by y uh, wi, where wi are the uh, fundamental dominant coweights. Uh, right, so we, uh, so we may assume uh, so to so to describe this uh, so to describe these relations uh, we may assume that uh, uh, lambda alpha i is either zero or one okay so if we do it in these two cases we will have it for all the fundamental dominant coweights and then because they generate the coweight lattice you have it for everything okay so so okay maybe let me state this uh, so proposition uh, yeah so the elements y lambda lambda in p check and uh, ti i in i naught these are the finite simple reflections generate be uh, as a group, okay, uh, two, if, uh, if uh, lambda alpha i is, uh, is zero, then, uh, so for some, some i in i naught, then uh, what we have, the relation we have is ti y lambda is y lambda ti, okay, and uh, if uh, lambda alpha i is one for some i in i naught, uh, then uh, the relation reads uh, y lambda is t i uh, y s i lambda t i. Okay, so let me uh, quickly prove this. Okay, so proof. Uh, so note that uh, when so a priori we had b e was uh, b a semi direct product with omega so we know that so we know uh, b e is generated by um, uh, t zero to t n uh, 
and the y lambda lambda in p check we already have this so we just need to see that uh, that t0 is redundant t0 is not needed right because everything else so i just have to explain why t0 can be obtained from the y lambda and the t1 through tn okay so but uh, this is uh, no also note uh, uh, s0 times s alpha 0 is t of uh, alpha 0 check s0 is s a0 here where a0 was this minus uh, alpha naught plus one okay you can uh, so if you write down the reflection you get this and uh, also the also s alpha naught of a naught is s alpha naught of minus alpha naught plus sorry i had this as the constant c the constant function one which is uh, which is alpha naught plus c belongs to r a plus so so the uh, so what do i have so the so the length of uh, s naught s alpha naught is the length of s naught plus the length of s alpha naught so in the which implies that in the braid group b so in b e uh, in b e we have t naught times t s alpha naught is t uh, s naught s alpha naught which is t uh, uh, my uh, sorry alpha naught check uh, translation by alpha naught check which is basically y uh, alpha naught check okay so so t naught uh, yeah now t naught belongs to this uh, y uh, uh, y lambda uh, t1 through tn uh, where uh, y lambda uh, sorry lambda belongs to p check and i yeah right because t naught i have expressed it in terms of t s alpha naught which is in w so it it can be it, it is obtained here and uh, y alpha naught check belongs to uh, uh, p check okay so so i have proved that this forms a group uh, uh, sorry b is generated as a group by just the y lambdas lambda and p check and ti is from 1 through n okay so to prove uh, 2 and 3 so for 2 and 3 i will need some properties of the length function which i will uh, leave as an exercise maybe for the tutorial uh, exercise below so these are uh, basic properties of the length function that you can uh, you can uh, deduce from mcdonald's book so uh, so the first thing is uh, uh, if uh, maybe let me label them as a if lambda belongs to p plus check then the length of t of lambda is uh, two times the pairing between lambda and rho and uh, if uh, uh, yeah if lambda belongs to p plus check then the length of uh, w times t of lambda is the length of w plus the length of t of lambda okay and uh, if uh, if alpha i lambda is zero for some uh, i in i naught then uh, the length of t lambda times si is uh, the length of si times t of lambda which is the length of t of lambda plus one and uh, also uh, if uh, alpha i lambda is minus one for some uh, i in i zero then uh, the length of uh, si t of lambda is the length of t of lambda uh, minus one so all of this can be deduced from chapter two of mcdonald's book okay so if you use these two and three are uh, sort of easy to prove so yeah if you use this two cmd lambda where is it Lambda is in P check. I have not assumed anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
yeah so so when lambda is in p plus check this already takes care of this so this takes care of the uh, the other part okay so anyway uh, yeah so uh, so now using these uh, using these for for two uh, if uh, lambda belongs to p plus check then the uh, then which one which one do we want to use uh, yeah so basically then b implies then part b implies that uh, uh, part b and c i guess uh, yeah, actually, but just C would suffice. Anyway, then uh, C, uh, imply that uh, TSI times Y lambda is a TSI T, a T of lambda, which is TSI T of lambda, which is uh, because the length is additive here. I've used uh, part C here by C. And this is T, uh, T of lambda SI, which is uh, Y lambda T SI. Okay, so that was the uh, that was this relation. Okay, and to prove three, uh, to prove uh, to prove three. Um, uh, so let uh, let pi is uh, I guess two lambda minus alpha i check right. If you write down what si of lambda is, this is what you get. You can check that. Uh, uh, pi belongs to p plus check okay and uh, and uh, using these length relations using a to d we can show that uh, the the length of si times t of pi is uh, two times the pairing between lambda rho minus 1 um the the length of t lambda times si is the pairing between lambda rho uh, minus 1 and uh, the length of uh, t lambda uh, si t of lambda is also yeah these two are anyway equal and 2 lambda rho minus 1 uh and note that uh, basically SI times the translation by pi is uh, T of lambda SI T of lambda. And uh, if I look at it this way, then on both sides, I have uh, 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 reduced expressions. So, uh, uh, and this equality has uh, reduced expressions on both sides. So what does this tell us that uh, uh, so so this implies that uh, ti times y pi is uh, t t of lambda si times uh, y lambda right from here and the fact that they are reduced uh, meaning the length is additive um, but uh, y pi is y lambda times y si lambda and uh, uh, t, t, lam, t of lambda si is t, t of lambda times uh, t si inverse because you see the from yeah from this okay so we have these two so this so basically this implies that if i plug it in here what do i get um, uh, so this basically implies that ti uh, uh, yeah yeah so yeah so uh, yeah this basically gives that ti y si lambda uh, ti is uh, uh, is y lambda Okay, so this uh, finishing the finishing the proof. So this was the the second relation that we, we wanted to prove that if uh, 
so these are the this is the so we this theorem basically explains how uh, the y lambda for lambda in p check interacts with the ti and depending on whether the pairing is zero or one you have uh, these these relations okay uh, so from so so what does this tell us uh, so can theorem can I ask, yeah. I'm confused. Why are the elements of omega, uh, how, how do you express the elements of omega in terms of these ti's and these y's? How, uh, or, or why, so we why have already, the, sorry? Yeah, I, I somehow I didn't catch why the elements of omega can be expressed in terms of the yi's and the, the y lambdas and the ti's. Uh, but yeah, so we have these two decompositions, right? So, so a priori, let me maybe go back to where I was. Uh, yeah, so we have that the uh, the extended affine break group is is this semi direct product decomposition. We have already done that. So the uh, extended affine break group is generated by these elements together with all the so omega recall is uh, p check mod q check. So you can express it in terms of t naught through t n and the y lambda for lambda in p check. But I, I need to add the t naught a priori because t naught is part of the, the generating set of b a. And I don't quite follow. How do you know that you've identified in, in saying this, you've identified omega with p check mod q check, but how do you know that that identification is respecting the y's? the uh, respecting the so this was maybe the y lambdas, did not because prove the y this. lambdas were, de were defined uh, purely so uh, this is the first result i had right i proved this right here yeah i am not uh, sure if i f uh, follow the concern exactly so i can uh, express the elements of omega in terms of T W as T W, where W belongs to W E, right? That that is part of. And W E is a P check semi direct product with uh, uh, yeah, uh, the finite y. Oh, uh, so we can we can go on. I'm just somehow missing. How do you take T U, and um, and find an expression in terms of y's? Y's and TI, but we can go on. We can do it uh, maybe in the. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Session. So yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, yeah. Sure. But I, I think I, I, me, the the two decompositions that we had for W E, we proved two decompositions for the extended affine while group. One was this one. The other one was P check semi direct product with W. So when you move from one decomposition to the other, that will express the elements of omega as, uh, as uh, P check. Uh, yeah, as an element of p check and an element of the finite value. Uh, okay, so but any yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. have to check all the lengths somehow. Okay, that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. So yeah. So let's. Uh, let me. Okay. So. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, what. Um, yeah, I don't know where I stopped. Uh, sorry, I lost track of my notes. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, okay. So the theorem I want to state is um, uh, the extended affine uh, braid group BE is generated by uh, B, uh, which is, uh, yeah, this is the braid group of the finite while group. So it's generated by T1 through Tn, uh, the braid group of W. Uh, and the lattice Yp check subject to the relations Um, one, if 
alpha i lambda is zero for some uh, for some i and i naught, then uh, t i y lambda is y lambda times t i, and uh, if uh, if alpha i lambda is one for for some uh, alpha i in delta naught, uh, yeah, yeah, then yeah, let me just say i in i naught. Then we have y lambda is t i, y s i lambda uh, t i. Okay, so I'll not prove this. Uh, so for the proof, you can see uh, chapter uh, three point three of McDonald. I mean, all the details we have already seen most of it. But uh, so, so, uh, yeah, that uh, these are the these are the defining relations as proved in uh, McDonald. Okay. And I want to point out something here. So uh, note, uh, note, uh, T i square is not one in B. So there is a, so there is a, so there is a, a left uh, extended affine um, affine B and uh, uh, a right extended affine B. So I'll not go through the details of this, but I'll uh, probably just send a short note, which uh, which maybe Venkatesh can make it available on the website. And then it's just some bookkeeping because I mean, where I just replace these relations here, I just replace TI by TI inverse. And you can show that they are still isomorphic, but then there is this left affine break group and the right affine break group. And this will be relevant, I think, when we discuss the uh, the double affine break group. So I'll uh, I'll send some, yeah, I'll not, yeah, I'll send some, no, uh, maybe a short note about what it is later. Um, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Since you say that these are the defining relations, what happened to things like uh, y lambda y mu is equal to y lambda plus mu? If they oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Cluster. I should. Yeah, they they are also part of it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah I, I I misspoke. I guess these these just are the defining relations on uh, on how y p check interacts with p one through t n. In addition, you also have the relations that come from p check. Yeah. You said the lattice. Okay, that keeps extracting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I yeah. Right. Okay, so anyway, so uh, okay, so from this, let me uh, go to let me talk about affine Hecke algebras now. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, so we are as before, so we will define. Uh, uh, affine Hecke algebras as uh, as quotients of group algebras uh, of braid groups uh, subject to these Hecke relations, similar to what we had last time, subject to Hecke uh, relations. So. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I need to introduce this family of uh, pa this parameter, uh, one parameter family. So let uh, say tau i, uh, i and i uh, be non-zero complex numbers. Uh, uh, um, such that uh, tau i equals tau j, when uh, SI and uh, SJ are, are conjugate in are conjugate in WE and uh, the Hecke algebra H tau of WE uh, with uh, with parameter tau is the is the quotient of the group algebra uh, C of uh, uh, BE by relations uh, 
टी आई माइनस टाउ आई टाइम्स टी आई प्लस टाउ आई इन वर्स इज जीरो आई इक्वल जीरो थ्रू जीरो थ्रू एन ओके दिस इज कंप्लीटली एनालिगस टू वॉट वी डिड लास्ट टाइम and uh, Sorry, so uh, what uh, what does the you know it is conjugate in wd will that make a difference so uh, this capital i is just a finite thing no capital i is the affine thing so uh, it is uh, uh, what is a i so uh, s0 through sn uh -huh. i is the indexing set for these uh, so yeah i is basically 0 through n and i not is uh, one through n the i not indexes the finite simple reflections i indexes the affine simple reflections okay oh, thank you yeah okay um yeah so uh, uh, notation um so we will use uh, T W W in W E and the Y lambda lambda in P check to denote uh, both uh, both elements of uh, both elements of the uh, of of the E and this Hecke algebra and uh, H tau of W. Okay, so the I think the key uh, the uh, the key uh, result i need to prove uh, which i think i have time for so let me just go ahead with it so we need to we need to understand um, we need to understand how uh, so we had this decomposition of we have given two decompositions of be right one is uh, ba semi direct product with omega and the other is uh, p check semi direct product with uh, uh, the braid group of the finite while group we want analogous decompositions for the affine hecke algebras so for that uh, 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 this 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 is there is this lemma which is due to lustig it is called the lustig lustig's fundamental relation so let me prove that so we need to understand how uh, uh, ti and uh, and y lambda interact in um, interact in h tau of we so this is a uh, 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 lustig's uh, fundamental relation um lemma for for i equals 1 through n these are the finite simple reflections so uh, because there was okay so that is i belongs to i not okay so for i in uh, from 1 through n and lambda in p check uh, the following relation holds um ti y lambda minus uh, y si lambda ti is tau i minus tau i inverse times uh, y si lambda minus y lambda over y minus alpha i check uh, minus 1 uh sorry let me make sure there is no typo here uh okay uh uh yeah okay so yeah i think this is correct okay so let me just prove this uh proof so we can uh, we can easily uh reduce ourselves to the case uh, reduce to proving this uh for when when the pairing between lambda and alpha i is either 0 or 1 i mean basically you do this for the dominant fundamental coweights and uh <clears throat> when when uh, uh when lambda alpha i is 
the the relation this relation let me label this star the relation uh, star becomes uh, ti y lambda minus y si lambda ti is zero because because uh, SI lambda is lambda. When lambda alpha is zero, SI lambda is lambda. So this holds, which is basically we are, which basically amounts to saying that uh, uh, and yeah, so which is which is if and only if PI Y lambda minus Y lambda TI is zero, which is if and only if TI y lambda is y lambda ti but we prove that this relation holds in the brain yeah but uh, but this holds this was part of this theorem that we proved about the let me just quickly look yeah you can look at these two statements these these hold in the braid group okay and uh, yeah so okay and when uh, when uh, uh, lambda alpha i is one, uh, what we have is uh, y si lambda is y uh, lambda minus alpha i check, right? Because si lambda is just lambda minus alpha i check. And uh, we want to prove, uh, if I plug this in, we want to prove that uh, ti y lambda minus y si lambda ti is tau i minus tau i inverse times uh, y lambda the, because why if you write y si lambda in this form and then you factor out the y lambda i'll cancel off the denominator the factor in the denominator okay so this is what uh, so basically this is what we want to prove uh, which is equivalent to showing that uh, ti y lambda minus uh, uh, ti inverse y lambda is tau i minus tau i inverse uh, y lambda because in the braid group we had this relation y si lambda is ti inverse y lambda ti inverse. So in the braid group we had this relation so that gives us this uh, which is equivalent to proving that ti minus ti inverse is uh, Tau, tau i minus tau i inverse, which, uh, yeah, which holds in the, yeah, in, um, yeah, which holds in h tau of w e. I mean, this was basically a re, this is basically a reformulation of the relation in that t i minus tau i times ti plus tau i inverse is zero. Okay, so from this, I, I in fact showed this last time, so we can get uh, but get this. So this gives us uh, the uh, Lustig's fundamental relation, which explains how uh, the uh, how the uh, uh, yeah. So so now we have uh, yeah. So this this tells us uh, how. Uh, Y lambda and T i uh, interact in in H tau of uh, of W. E. Okay, so let me just uh, maybe two two presentations. Um, so we had uh, we had had two decompositions of B. Uh, of BE, uh, the first one was uh, uh, BE in terms of uh, BA and omega, and the second one was BE in terms of uh, YP check and uh, B of W. Uh, so this gives us, so this, this gives, two presentations of, uh, of H tau of W E. The first one is, uh, first one yields what is called the Coxter presentation. And the second one uh, yields what is called the Bernstein presentation.
Okay. Uh, so shall I just take up maybe two more minutes and just give the statements of uh, two more statements for these? Uh, Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, so then I'll, okay, so the Coxeter presentation comes, yeah, the Coxeter presentation uh, the, yeah, the subalgebra uh, H tau of WE uh, generated by TI I in I, these are the affine simple reflections. Uh, is isomorphic to the to the uh, usual uh, Hecke algebra H tau of W A uh, attached to the Coxter system. Uh, we discussed this last time, right? Attached to a Coxter system, we got a braid group, and from that we got a Hecke algebra, uh, W A with uh, S, and uh, we have H tau of W E is uh, isomorphic to omega uh, semi-direct product with H tau of W A. Uh, the action of I'll not explicitly say this, but the action of omega on uh, uh, w a is uh, exactly what we had before and uh, the Bernstein presentation uh, the natural map map from h tau of w uh, tensor with tensor over c with c y p check uh, to H tau of uh, W E uh, given given by multiplication is an isomorphism of uh, vector spaces. So, in particular, the the yeah the elements uh, uh, y lambda times T W form. Uh, or w in w and lambda in p check gives a gives a c basis for for this for this Hecke algebra okay so these are the two presentations that i mean okay so this is more or less straightforward the first one the coxter presentation is essentially uh, contain the proof is essentially uh, done in our discussion here i have to uh, maybe okay one can easily see that this is a generating set but uh, I mean, this is a spanning set, but uh, with a little bit of work, you can also prove that it's linearly independent. And then uh, that gives the, the, the two presentations uh, of the affine Hecke algebra. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll stop here, yeah. Any question, comments? Okay, uh, if there are no questions, uh, let's thank Radhika. We'll, we'll stop the recording.